Good morning. We are here with Breakfast with Bev Facebook Live, um, and today we are going to be discussing uh, market stats for the first half of the year. They have been compiled, and um, we're just going to take a look and give you some of the numbers for how we did in the first six months of 2018. Good morning. I am Bev Curtis here at Bev & Co. at House of Brokers, and Cheryl is with me here this morning. And the board office typically compiles on a monthly basis the statistics that come through as far as pending properties, sold properties, and kind of gives a little bit of a forecast and analysis just of the real estate market, the local market in general. And so it's always interesting to kind of look at the numbers because I have to say it's very helpful in kind of determining forward going off of history, what's happened in the market, what the inventory looks like, and kind of what the projections are going forward. So Cheryl, if you wouldn't mind kind of starting off, let's kind of share with some of these statistics. Yeah, so um, you're to date, now these are the stats for up through June 30th. Um, there's been 303 homes sold in Boone County. That's up um, 0.06% from last year. Homes under contract right now are seeing 261, up 6.4% from last year. So leading into the fall, we should see um, you know those numbers up as well since the under contract homes are up. Average days on the market is averaging out about 50 days. That's up a little, 19%. The average sold price and median sold price are also up. Um, average sold price in Boone County is about 237, and the median sold price is about 201,000. And the interesting thing, which is kind of consistent throughout time, I think, is just kind of, you know, kind of like we touched upon a couple of weeks ago in one of our um, visits, was that, you know, real estate is goes in cycles, it's very cyclical. And the spring market is kind of the plunge of the market, so to speak. And then after that, it kind of stair steps down into the summer session, fall session, winter. And then that whole cycle just kind of restarts over again. With that being said, it's kind of interesting to know that of, of the uh, stats that were provided, that 150 to 200,000 range is kind of the hot pocket. That is the price point where a lot of buyers find it um, it's very affordable. Um, it's a great price point. Um, it makes more sense than sometimes to rent versus to own in that particular case. And so 85 sales happened in that 150 to 200 range just in the sold month of May. Now you have to keep in mind, May is a pretty busy closing month, May and June, because as the cycle flows, a lot of properties come on the market after the first of the year or very early spring, depending on the weather. And then people go out and look at homes, put them under contract, go through their inspection periods. And then the closing periods usually end up to kind of be in April, May, and June. So with that being said, the next bracket as far as having the peak of sales was that 200 to 250 range, which kind of stands to reason what we've been talking about here the past couple of weeks is that that 250 and below range is definitely kind of the hot price range that tends to go quickly. I know a lot of people, you know, talk about the multiple offers and how there's so much, you know, lack of inventory. That's the price point that people are actually referring to. Once you get above to that 350 range, the numbers fell off in May from 350 to 400 to only four closed sales in May. So, I mean, that number drops off dramatically. And then as you go up to that 750 to a million range, two properties sold. So the kind of the, the sweet spot, so to speak, is that 250 and below. Once you creep up to 300, 350 and above, the numbers definitely start to fall off. Doesn't mean that sales doesn't happen. You just have to keep it in perspective as far as supply and demand. And with the supply and demand, um, under 200, the month supply was significantly less coming in about a month, a month and a half for any, you know, anything priced under 200. And then it started creeping up. The largest month supply was the 450 to 500 range at eight months um, supply of inventory. And that actually, that number is down considerably because at one point, that 400 back. to 600 range a couple months back 
was a 16 month inventory. So now that number has dropped down to the eight, but keep in mind that's either, you know, either people remove their home off the market, uh, perhaps it expired or didn't sell for some reason, or there was actual sales that happened. I mean, just the reflection on the numbers, it looks like some people probably did remove their homes off the market. Um, but once again, this is kind of the time of year. I mean, every home will sell at the right price in the right time frame, And this is kind of the time of year where you have to get creative with that. And we're kind of starting to get into the season where you're seeing a lot more trades, perhaps, where people, somebody wants to size down, somebody wants to size up, and you see if it's a good fit to kind of put the pieces of the puzzle to do a trade. That's also pretty popular in the new construction world. Um, new construction, and now that we're kind of on that topic, um, is actually kind of dropped a little bit lower in sales than last year. Um, the numbers each month is just a tad bit lower. Um, so it, it definitely stands to, to reason that we do have some surplus of inventory in the new construction world. And so that's where a trade option or getting, you know, um, creative financing involved can certainly be advantageous to make that sale happen. Yeah. So, okay. Um, as far as the average sold price um, as compared to last year, in 2017, at the end of the year, the stats reported was $212,004. And as of June, excuse me, my allergies are kicking in. As of June, the average sales price was two thirty-seven one twenty-two. So, if you want to take that one here, <clears throat> and then I think we already talked about the homes sold. There, year to date, there's been about three hundred and three homes sold so far this year in Boone County. That's not a huge change from last year. Um, there's about three hundred. Um, about the same amount this time last year of homes sold. So that's not up too much. It stayed very consistent. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the second half of the year plays out. I think we're seeing it's been a little busier this summer than usual. The market kind of got off to a later start with just weather and everything. Um, so it'll slow down as we head into fall. But so far, the stats have looked really good. And well, and as far as the existing sales too, um, it seems like we're chugging right along where we should match up with last year's number. As of 2017, there was a total of 1,917 homes total sold that was reported within the board as far as existing home sales. And then there was an additional 285 homes that sold that was actually in that new construction sector. So, um, and keep in mind, you know, these are all reported board stats. So if something was sold outside the Columbia Board of Realtors, then that would not be reported within the numbers that are reflected here. So just to make that disclosure. So I think the big question that people kind of are thinking about now is, what do I do going forward? Because school starts here in about two weeks, uh, which is just surprising that we're already through summer. It seems like it went by so fast. Um, the question that people ask now is, do I put my home on the market now? Do I wait till the spring? Do I buy now? Do I hold off till the fall? You know, and I think a lot of that, the answer that I would say is it depends. And here's why I say that. It really depends on your personal situation. If you have a job transfer situation and it's something that you know you have to go and time is of the essence, sometimes you have no choice no matter what the cycle that we're in. If it's something that's a want and perhaps maybe not a need, then the spring market is historically your peak season where you're probably going to achieve a higher price and probably more prospects that would be interested in your property that would hopefully drive up the, the demand for your property and to achieve that higher price. But I have to say, I think the, the concern right now, the kind of the unknown, is just what's going to happen with interest rates. And I think that we all know that, you know, interest rates going up is definitely much healthier for our overall economy. It's been suppressed for so long that I think a lot of us has been pretty spoiled, quite frankly. And so as rates go up, they're still fantastic, unheard of rates. It's just we've had them suppressed for so long that, you know, it's kind of a reality check now as they're coming back up. But it's a must need. I mean, we, we really need 
interest rates to creep up so the economy gets stronger and you know it all kind of coincides with one another so I think for someone that wants to buy it is certainly a time that is a good time to check out the inventory and see if you can find something that works for your needs and your lifestyle because you know let's face it prices are starting to come down as we creep you know near school starting in fall and as the pressure of rates start to increase then your buying power is also going to start to diminish so kind of put it into perspective i guess the, the the moral of the story is if you could always sell in the spring and always buy in the fall that would be the perfect scenario to take advantage of the market conditions because that's how it would be a total win-win but that usually does not pan out and the stars don't align up to make that happen so and i think the best um way to determine you know if you're thinking about selling is just contact us to set up a meeting and we mm -hmm. can you know analyze kind of what your situation is and um your time frame and kind of help you make that decision too so you don't have to make that all on call all on your own and the other thing to kind of keep in perspective is the type of property that you have to sell as well because there are some what i call specialty unique properties that really the time of year or cycle doesn't matter you know, if you've got a killer central location near downtown district area, or you've got this, you know, perfect uh, small acreage property that everybody's been waiting for to come on the market, there are some types of property like that, that it is not going to matter the time of year. You can put it on the market whenever you want, and you're probably going to have, you know, a very good buyer pool you know, that's going to give you a very good offer. So mm -hmm. that's something to kind of keep in perspective. But like Cheryl said, you know, I would definitely suggest if you're a buyer or a seller, contact your realtor, reach out to them, let them share with you what the current market stats are and size it up with what your situation is so that you can make the best informed decision for yourself. So, okay. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining in. We certainly wanted to share with you to let you know that our local market here is certainly healthy, very normal, and it's pretty much what's to be expected right before going back to school. So nothing too off the charts on that. So we appreciate you joining in. Hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week. Take care.